to Chef Thiru, to Vidya, and the uh, faculty members for inviting me once again to speak. Uh, it is truly uh, a privilege to be here at least once a year to interact and meet with all of you. You know, um, we often tend to um, move away from once we get back to our work and our daily routine or business and meeting targets back at work. And believe me, I return back much more enriched in my knowledge and learning each time I visit Manipal and interact with each of you. I believe uh, most of you all would be uh, moving on to taking jobs. Uh, some of you are going to higher education and some of you probably are thinking of starting your own businesses or going back to your family, family businesses. If you've got a job today or you've got jobs today, this is something that you should not take for granted. In today's time, jobs are getting fewer, especially in our industry because there are so many hotel management schools now. And you must remember that you are coming out of a very premier institute of India. Last year when I came here, there were people who had, I think, two or three job offers. And uh, I know it's a difficult choice that you have to make sometimes. I've had some long conversations with two or three people, and I hope they made the final choice, which was good and right for them. Uh, I am available throughout the day if anybody would like to come and talk to me one-to-one -one on that. During our time, we were 58 of us in our batch. Mine was the fourth course, and out of which I think only 20 of us got jobs at that time. The first and second batch, uh, I think, probably they, together they got only 10 jobs. When I, I passed out from here, I had no jobs. I had nothing, okay? But I had a good family. I had very nice parents a good family support. And my mom said, don't worry, come back. Something will, will, will work out for you. So if there's somebody over here who has, who had their heart set on a particular placement or a particular job and you did not get that, uh, please do not be disappointed. Okay? You may be disappointed now, but you cannot be defeated. Because there's something bigger, there's something better for you, and your journey has just begun. If you've deliberately not gone for a placement and you've deliberately not gone for an interview, then God help you. He will help you, but he will make you learn some hard lessons before that. Okay? So I believe I've got one hour to talk with you. I promise I'll try and make that uh, very interesting. I want to make this an interactive session. I know this big podium is in our way, but let it not come in your way. If you want to stop me, if you want to put up your hands and ask me a question, uh, you can do, do, do that. I don't like to hear my voice. I hate those videos you have sent me later on to listen to my talk. Uh, so I'd like to hear your voices. I'd like to hear what you want to say. I'd like to hear your questions. I'll stop. Don't worry. Don't worry about interrupting me. I can talk forever. And uh, I won't lose my ch chain of thought. So if you want to stop me and ask me something, please do that. Okay, so what you're going to do in this one hour is I am going to talk to you about my journey. Not about my achievements and what I've done and how life has been for me, but more so the lessons I have learned <coughs> in this journey in the hospitality industry. So if there was one thing I was very sure I wanted to do when I stepped out of this college was I wanted to be in the hospitality industry. That was a given. Okay? That was the only thing I knew I wanted. But there were lots of things I knew I didn't want to do. So I didn't want to do operations. I didn't want to do shifts. I didn't want to do night shifts. Okay, there's something like a jet lag I used to, I used to get when I used to do night shifts. So I was unsure what I wanted to do. But how life has panned out to me has surprised me. And uh, it has been a pleasant surprise. It has been a very exciting journey. It has been a journey of disappointments, uh, achievements, uh, excitement, working with the best. And I'll share a little bit of that with you. Okay, I hope we have enough time. And if we have about 10 minutes in the end, we can do a Q&A. So you can hold your questions till the end, or if you feel we're running out of time, watch the clock and tell me and then stop me. Okay? So, bloom where you're planted. 
like I said, I've been from the fourth batch and I've been in this industry for 27 years. And my first job was at the ITC Xerox Sheraton in Mumbai, in Bangalore sales. I landed this job because, not because I applied there, but because I accompanied a friend who was going there for an interview. Okay? So I was wearing my, you know, normal casual clothes and I was sitting in the lobby and I told her, do not tell Mr. Shishra Bajal that I am here. So Mr. Sheshan Bajan was the president of ITC, ITC hotels at one point. Today he's the country and man, country manager and the managing director of Night Frank. So he was heading ITC uh, Xerox Sheraton at that time. Like me, he used to come during our time and talk to us. And we always found him very inspirational and a great leader and somebody that we would love to work for and whatever, whatever, whatever. But I was disappointed before I left college because I did not get into the management training program of ITC hotels. And I saw I would never join ITC ever again. <laughs> I know it sounds, sounds very funny. So I sat in the lobby there while my friend went for the interview and she finished her interview and whatever, whatever. And she comes out and she says, Mr. Bejit wants to meet you. And I was like, what did I tell you? Not to tell him that I'm here. And she said, but he asked me, where are you staying? And I said, with Serena. And he asked me, what is, what is, what is Serena doing? And I said, nothing. So, and he asked me, where is she? And I could not lie, saying that you're not there. So I went inside and he said, okay, so you don't think you should come and talk to me and you don't think I have a place for you in my, my hotel, is it? I said, no, sir, this, that, whatever. And he said to me, tell me what you want. Tell me which role you want. And they said, and they do say that workshop students are very proud, isn't it? They think they are uh, cream. So <laughs> I said, to, so he said, do you want um, f &B service? I said, no, sir, not f &B service. So he said, you want uh, front office? I said, no, sir, I don't want front office. You want guest relations? I said, no, sir, that's such a dumb job. And he was very nice, okay? He was very, very nice. Then he rings up the f &B manager and he says, um, you want somebody in uh, banquet sales, right? You've got uh, vacancy, uh, 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 two vacancies there. So that was uh, Mr. Vig Vijay Singh, who was the uh, manager at that time. So he said, yes, there is one place that we do require a lady. So he looked at me and he says, would you like that, madam? And I actually wanted to do sales and marketing, okay? but I didn't know what route to take because nobody would take you as a fresher in sales and marketing. What do you know of sales? What do you know of marketing? What do you know of the market? Do you know negotiation skills? Do you know presentation skills? So it was something that I didn't know what to do about. And I thought this would be a good route to take through Banquet City because it was a mix of operations and mix of going out into the market and meeting uh, customers and an MBA wouldn't take a Banquet Sales job, right? So I said, yes, sir, I'll take it. So he said, go right now for an interview up to VVJ Singh. And I was wearing a t-shirt and a short skirt. And I was like, not now, sir. Can I come in the evening? He says, no, you'll go now. And that's how I got that job. OK? Now, why am I saying bloom where you're planted? What would have happened if I had not taken that job? OK? Because you know what happened after that? Well, Mr. Belgian said to me, you wanted the management trainee program. You didn't get in this year. I'll make sure you get it next year. This year you work hard here, and next year I'll make sure you get it there. So I took that job on that promise. Okay? God had different plans. So I worked in banquet sales, got to know the Bombay market, met the corporates, enjoyed the sales calling, enjoyed meeting people, enjoyed the corporate, um, you know, uh, lifestyle and meeting, meeting people. And uh, six months down the line, I got a headhunter who called me and said, we have a job for you at Oprah Hotels. And that was a real catch-22. Now what do I do? Oprah Hotels used to not come to our college for, in, for interviewing because it was obviously a conflict of interest. They have OCLD, don't they? And Oprah Hotels, to work in Oprah Hotels in 1992 was like a gift on a platter to you. But I also had a promise I had made someone that I would work hard and work for the management training program. What do I do? 
So I weighed everything and whatever. And I said, this was an opportunity of a lifetime because I was getting an executive role in Oprah Hotels. And here were my colleagues who had got into Oprah Hotels as management trainees who would get it after two years. Got it? So I took it. I took it up. Mr. Benjamin was very upset with me. He says, you're a traitor. <laughs> what have you, very sweetly, of course. What have you done and this and that? Do you know what he did? He said, you're giving an executive role, Serena. I said, yes, Mr. Benjamin. He said, I'm not sure. He rang the personal manager of that hotel and he said, is that true? Because I don't want this girl to be, uh, you know, upset and bitched about this. And they said, yes. So he said, go with my blessings. Okay? <clears throat> Guess what happened six months after that? In 1993. Maybe some of you were little children or not born yet. Sea Hotel was bombed with the 1993 riots that happened. And the hotel shut down. And that year, they didn't take a single management trip. So you see what I mean? So you see where my journey was leading me? OK? You have to bloom where you are planted, wherever God has taken you, wherever this journey is taking you. You need to be there, learn, absorb, understand, Pick up those skills, pick up those experiences, learn, learn, learn. <laughs> Nobody is expecting you to contribute at this level. They're asking you to roll up your sleeves and put your shoulder to the wheel and work. And you are the one who will gain, not them. And you need to do it with diligence. Because I see many of our students, they already think they've landed when they move out of or they graduate from this place. And they think they are God's gift to mankind. You will be one day. We all are God's gifts. But you have to work diligently for God to take you to the next phase of your life. Okay? Sometimes it's a stepping stone to something wonderful that is in store for you. You may not be happy where you are. But I would say look around and make a conscious decision to absorb, learn, and bloom where you're planted. Your first three or four years should be immersed absorbing all that's around you. And at the, at the, at the Obroy, again, it wasn't, it wasn't for me to say I've landed here. Yes, I did land there. But guess what? The benchmarks were very, very high in that group and that hotel. High standards, high expectations, high experience, high quality, moments of steep learning curves. And you know what? I knew that was another opportunity and another stepping stone to something even more wonderful. Okay? So I'll come back to that in a minute. The other thing, there's no room for ordinary. You must understand that you are graduating from one of the best institutions of India. Everybody agrees to that? Yes? Everybody agrees to that? Yes. Good. There are certain expectations, standard and quality that the industry expects from the students that come out from this college. Okay, I have spoken to people, many people in the industry and they say that college does turn out good quality. So you have to live to those expectations in whatever way and whatever best way you can. I'm not trying, I'm not telling you become Vikas Khanna. You will become you. But you have to make sure that you live up to the quality and standard and expectations. And you must display that to your workplace wherever you are heading post you. One of these qualities is to excel. And that's what I meant by no room for ordinary. In whatever you do. Because you are not ordinary. You are made to do wonderful things. You have cho chosen a path that will take you to higher places. You will engage and influence decision makers, but most of all, you will make a difference to people's lives. The people, you, you will lead people, you will lead, lead businesses, you will work with customers, and you will serve. Okay? Let me give you a, let me tell you a story. This is a real, real life story. Whatever sto stories I tell you, tell you today are all real. I'm not making them up. I don't see them in my dreams. They are real. I'm reading a book called Business Stories, written by a gentleman called Indranil Chakraborty, who worked, he's a marketing specialist, and he worked with the Club Mahindra for a little while. All of you have heard of Club Mahindra? 
So they have a hotel in Kurg, and one of their uh, mission statements is to go that extra mile and to bring smiles on people's faces. Simple mission. Okay. But what he says is we don't only say this is our mission and put it all over the walls and tell our staff, do this, do that, do this. We actually work it out in our everyday life. So the hotel in Kurg, there was this receptionist, Junior Muska. Maybe he had just got out of the hotel school and he was at the reception that day. And they, they get a call from a customer saying, we are coming up from, uh, I think they were coming up from Bangalore or Mangalore somewhere. And they were stuck in a very bad jam because there were some, some, some politicians also traveling up the same road and then blocked up the road and it was taking very long for them to reach. And he said, you know, we have two little children in the car. They're like three and five. And we're not going to make it to the hotel for lunch. It's probably going to be way beyond four, five o'clock or whatever. So please keep our room. And if you don't mind, please keep some lunch for us. When we reach there, we're going to be famished and we're not going to have something to eat. So please keep us some lunch. So this receptionist said, yes, sir, no, sir, three bags food like we always do. And he said, don't worry, and this and that and whatever. And he put the phone down. And he informed whoever that they were going to be late. This is what we would all do, right? Yes. This is ordinary. Look at the extraordinary thing he did. He put the phone down and he thought about it. And he asked the chef. He said, chef, lunch pack kar lena. And he packed up the lunch and he had a bike. He sat on the bike and he went down that road and he met them where they were, where they were stuck. And he said, sir, this is your lunch. For you and the children, you've got small children here. By the time you reach out there, it will be six or seven o'clock. And he went back. Can you imagine what that family felt about Club Mahindra? That's going the extra mile. That's doing something beyond ordinary. That's the ant who's carrying the strawberry. So these are the small, small things that are expected. This is what is expected of you. OK? So this is what I mean by saying you must do the extraordinary. When I was a trainee like you, when we had gone for our industrial training, this is another story. I was training at the Taj Fort Aguada in Goa. And half of my training I did in front office and half of my training I did in FMB service. So the general manager knew me because he would see me here and he would see me there and he would see me everywhere. And uh, there was, I think it was Christmas, a Christmas party, a children's Christmas party and all these children were there and whatever. And there was this little boy, I think they were Australian. I think he had played in the sand in, on the beach and he had a speck of sand that went on his eye and it stuck there. And by, uh, by evening his eyes were red and his parents were very worried and being foreigners and going to an hospital in, in India is a scary affair for them in those days. So the general manager, Mr. Malutra, called me and said, Hey, Serena, it's 6 o'clock in the evening. You're a Goan. Uh, you would probably be able to speak to the hospital and GMC and help these guys. Would you go with them in the car to the hospital and see what we can do about this and meet the doctor and whatever? I said, sure, sir, I will. And I went there and we met the doctors. It was difficult. You know how it is, no? the government hospitals. And we made sure that this boy was treated and they removed that speck in his eye. Imagine a six-year-old. I mean, someone trying to pull something out of his eye from traumatizing. And they came back and they were like, thank you so much. We are eternally grateful to you and whatever, whatever. And life went on and I <coughs> went on and I came back to college. And they did, um, on the Christmas party, they, they took a picture with me and stuff and whatever, whatever. And I went and life went on and whatever. One month later, I get a post. It was here in, in workshop. I get the post and I go and pick it up. And it was a lovely picture of me with the family and a sweet little note that they had written behind. Thank you for doing this for my son. You know, these are those moments that you will always remember and it will be worth all your while and worth all those 12 hours a day that you spend working. So look for these little joys and little things which have a larger impact than that three lakhs a day you want to make. That will come. There's no two ways about that. But for this, you have to work, go that little extra money. Okay? My next lesson was 
take calculated risks. So remember I said I felt I was being prepared to do something else at Oberoi Hotel. So, of course at that time we had no clue. But yes, things were hotting up for me at Oberoi Hotels. And I was feeling enslaved. Long hours, stress, minimum family life. And sometimes I felt there was no, there's going to be no growth. The career plan was not very clear at Obra Hotels. And they had put me into a box because I was very good at what I was doing. So every time I would go up to them and say, I want to do something different. Let me, let us do this, let us do that. And they, big organizations have this tendency of doing that. No, 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 no. You are good at this. You please excel at this. You are an ATM machine. Continue doing that, you know. But then you feel stifled, and you feel I want to do something different, isn't it? And again, I knew what I didn't want to do, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. But again, I wanted to be in the hospitality industry. But again, there was only ITC, Taj, and Oberoi's. So where do I go? So you will reach a point when you feel like, gosh, I've reached like a dead end. Okay, but again, what did I say? You may feel disappointed, but don't feel defeated. And I started speaking to some people and started talking to them about how I'm feeling and whatever, whatever. And in 1996, I got an opportunity to meet uh, somebody called Mr. Dinesh Khanna. I don't know whether you've heard of him, but he's one of the legacies in the, the, the hotel industry. He's like another Vicky Obroy. He owns the Novotel in Mumbai, the Majorda Beach Resort in Goa, the Taj Bakery in Bidi, Kerala. And he was starting this place called the Club Mumbai. That's where I work. That's where our corporate office is. Okay? Believe me, guys, in those days, that era, how many of you are from Bombay, Mumbai, or familiar with Mumbai? Few, no? Always there are few. So um, nobody knew what was <coughs> Andheri and all that area and Juhu and whatever, whatever. And he was sta starting this private new club called the Club Mumbai. And he wanted only hoteliers. And he wanted people from the hospitality industry. So it's a very premium uh, club, which has all your Shah Rukhs and Rithiks and all your uh, top-notch corporate heads and um, Mr. Pavan Goenka of Mahindra's and all these guys as members there. So it's very exclusive, very highly security gu guarded and uh, high on hospitality. We are very, very high on hospitality, right from our... Um, our, our cooking, our restaurants, our housekeeping, our recreation, and all the facilities that we provide them. Now that's the big brand today. But in 1996, I was getting this offer, and it was a startup at that time. In today's term, you would call it a startup, isn't it? This excited me. And I went for this interview, and I got this job, and I did, my heart did palpitate. And I did say, I'm leaving this very well oiled ground oak thing called Obra Hotels, and I'm joining this place which was under construction. But today, that's history, and it's a big brand today. And there have been wonderful things that have happened in that place. People, uh, what you say, if there's a benchmark for the club uh, industry <coughs> in our country, uh, they look at the club first. Your sir, Mr. Bhattacharya, um, I believe has just finished a lecture or a session on clubs and resorts. And yes, he was, beginning. oh, you're beginning, is it? Yeah. So he was saying, I wish I wish you could stay a day longer and talk about it. So I said, maybe an, an, another time. And uh, yes, I, it has been an exciting journey. I was one of the core team members. Today, a lot of decisions, uh, I am one of the decision makers there for anything that we may expand into or go into or any of the new projects that we may, we may get into. Yeah, so uh, you need to take calculated risks. You need to take risks sometimes in, in your life, but make sure it's calculated. And again, grow with the brand. Sometimes you may say, you know, this is such a small brand. I don't know who they are. Pata nahi kya ho jayega. Maybe it's a fly by night. Whatever, whatever. You have to calculate. Talk to your mentors. Be in touch with your faculty who are here to help you. Be in touch with pe pe people who are not biased. Your faculty will never be biased. Ask them. Ask their advice. Get, talk to as many people as you can. And then, then make your decision. Okay, I have a nephew who works for Zomato. 
he took up this job with Zomato about six or seven years ago. Did we, did any of us knew, know what Zomato would be like? I think today all of us who want to eat out, we look at, at, at Zomato first. Yes? Yeah? Did any one of us know what book my show would grow up to be? Today you want to go for an entertainment show, movie, whatever. Where do we look at <coughs> your book my show? So your book my show and your Zomato have become the Googles of the food industry and the entertainment industry. So don't be afraid of taking risks, but make sure they are calculated. Look who are the people behind that business. That's your number one litmus test. Who's the guy behind that business? What bandwidth has he got? Right? What credibility has he got? What values has he got? Someone with strong values will never let you down. Will never let his business down and the people who he has with him, he will not let you down. Okay? Right? Let's move on. Associate and learn from the best. Now this is something I learned first from my mother and later on from all the bosses that I've had and I've worked with. Now, when we say best, it's a bit of a scary word, isn't it? Because everybody wants us to be the best. So what I'm saying is you may not be the best. The business that you start, the entrepreneurs may not be the best. And you may not even have the best. Your parents try and give you their best, but you may not have the best. There is always someone who is better than you, correct? Yeah. But one thing you must do, you must associate and learn from the best. Okay, why? Because you get influenced by the best. And when you get influenced by the best, you will always do your very best. Remember that. Okay? So my mother, when she would shop and when she would buy anything for the house or for us or whatever, she would always buy the best. Okay, if it was mangoes, best mangoes. If it was curtains, the best curtains. If it was uh, sofa or whatever, 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 it would always be the best. Somehow the best word was in her head. Okay, and no matter how much it costs, okay? No matter how much it costs, she, 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 she would say, it will last. <laughs> Today when we buy clothes, we don't, we don't want it to last, right? Because the fashion will go. Why do I want this? <laughs> yeah, and she did that with our education too. She put us in the best school. I then went to St. Xavier's College. Then I came to Manipal. Then I, I have done, I'm just doing my course with the best institute in India for learning and development. And I continue, do, I worked with the best. That is the Oberoi's, the ITC, and now the club. They are the best in what they do. You may have other brands, Hyatt, Marriott, or whatever, whatever, but they are the best Indian brands. Okay? And I continue doing this even with my children. I said to my children, if you have picked a particular career or a field, please go and study at the best. Please go and learn from the best. Okay? I'm not telling them to be the best because that's a little too cruel. But if you learn from the best and you associate with the best, you will do your very best. Okay? Anyone falling asleep? Anyone has any questions? No? Okay, swiftly moving. Strategy is better than competition. So now you're in this job, and there's <coughs> colleagues, there's peers, there's people from other colleges who've joined you all, there are people from whatever, whatever. So how many people are very competitive here by nature? So, yeah? Okay, there's one honest man who's put his hand up, but I'm sure there's two honest men. Okay, so you know, we, we tend to be competitive, right? In anything that we do. Anyone plays punching? <laughs> don't, now don't tell me you're not competitive there. You want to shoot that other guy down faster, better than the other guy. Okay? Anyone wants to be competitive in the exams? Of course. You want to be the best, right? You want to do better than the other. You want to outdo the others, right? Competition is good. Competition is good. It's very healthy. Very, very healthy. And if you're not, not uh, competing with someone and you're not being challenged by competition, then you become 
complacent. Okay, so you tend to say, you tend to um, compromise, and you tend to become complacent or whatever. So don't tell me there's nobody, only two men here who are competitive. There are many of us who are competitive. Sometimes we are competitive in our mind. Yeah. So you will have colleagues that you will meet. You will have uh, people in your higher studies or in your answer, whatever uh, business that you start, you are competing with, <coughs> with other, other businesses, aren't you? And I'm not saying competition is bad, okay? It is not bad at all. So let me tell you another story, a big storyteller here. So there were these two CEOs, and they both decided to go fishing, okay? So they said, fishing, and they both love, love fishing. So they went into this forest area and where there's a lake and whatever, whatever, and they were fishing. Suddenly, they saw a grizzly looking bear coming from the opposite direction. Now this is not Baloo the bear from Jungle Book, okay? Not a friendly guy. This is a, this is a wild bear. And you know what wild bears do, they attack you. So one, one, the one CEO said, oh my goodness, what do we do? What do we do? He's really heading towards us. Now what do we do? I really don't know what to do. And he panicked. The second guy opened his knapsack, took out a pair of sneakers, and he started wearing it. So like, to kya kar hai? So he said, I'm wearing the sneakers, so I can run. Okay. So this other guy said, you think you can outrun the bear? You think you can run faster than the bear? So he said, no, I can run faster than you. <laughs> so you get what I mean? So what did the CEO have? What did he have? <coughs> okay. He was not, he, he knew he was in competition. The bear can attack only one guy at a time. Okay. He had strategy. So, there's a lot of energy we sometimes spend on competing with each other. How much time we spend on thinking how to outdo the other person. It happens in businesses also. Happens with my boss also. And sometimes I just feel like looking at him and says, can you work on the strategy? Rather than thinking how much more money he has compared to you. Okay. I tell my, time, uh, my team that it's much more satisfying experience to work together than to work against each other. <coughs> We all have our targets, we all know our goals, we know we have to achieve them. So do everything that you can to reach your target and competition will take care of itself. If you are competing with one another for business, focus on your strategy. Because that is going to get you ahead and not the game of tripping one another in the tripping game. Remember that. Okay? So what did the clever CEO do? He had a strategy, while the other one did not. He knew what would get him ahead. And he, he was not competing with the other CEO. What was he doing? He was equipping himself. Okay? So that's a part of your journey as well. Equip yourself. Strategize. Think what's going to get you ahead. Putting your leg in front of somebody is not going to get you ahead. Okay? This is my favorite. Passion is an historical element that you have to have in order to succeed in your life. And in today's market and scenario, it is also innovation. There have been many passionate and favorite brands who died because they did not innovate. Anyone can name them? Yeah? yeah. Very good. Big example. For the first 10 years of my life, I had only a Nokia phone. After that, the loyalty went away. Then I had Blackberry. Even Blackberry died? Yeah. The others were Motorola, Kodak. <coughs> Anybody remembers Kodak? The photographs we used to take, reel, wash them, develop them. What happened to them? Kingfisher Airlines? Okay. So why am I saying this? In my opinion, they did not innovate because somewhere they lost the passion. So if you are not passionate about what you do and want to achieve in the future, 
you will stop innovating because you trust the same. Right? So if we did not have passionate people running this college, Baksha wouldn't have been what it is today. Like all the IHMs, they would have been having the <coughs> long lost curriculum and stayed right behind. It's a reality. I'm not trying to put competition down, but it's a fact. In our industry and in my journey in hospitality, I have experienced and seen that you cannot buy passion in people. That's another thing. Milta nahi hai, D-Mart mein. Ya Star Bazaar mein, ya to Hyper City. Passion cannot be bought. Passion is a drive that takes people to places that they have not even expected to. Because they do everything with a zest and zeal to take. That leaves an impact on their work and the people they work with. Be it your team, your bosses, or your colleagues. And you cannot hide passion. People will look at it, they will identify it, and they will say, this man will go places. Not because of his circumstances, not because of his economic background, not because of which college he came from, but because of the passion that is in him that will drive him to reach where he, where he has never even expected to reach. Okay? So my conclusion is that innovation cannot come about if there is no passion. And we know several big names that we can see passion in, in <coughs> right? My favorite one is, though in his, in his personal life and the way he did things, he's not my, fa my favorite man, but in his work, he was Steve Jobs. Yeah, Bill Gates, Mr. M.S. Oberoi, humble beginnings. He was a clerk at Oberoi Clarks in Shimla. Margaret Thatcher, the Iron Lady. She took her country to dizzying heights because of her passion and her innovation. Mr. Tata, great values. This is one man who I admire because of his values. Okay? And I'm very young, Mr. Narendra Modi. What guts, man. Okay? To take away that 500 rupee note from us. If he didn't do that, it, it required guts to do it. It required passion to do it. It was innovation. How he did it and all that is a different story altogether. Okay? Let's move on. Learn to influence and not manage. Please, can we remove this word manage? In today's world, today's young people don't want to be managed. They want to be influenced. Okay? You yourself want to be influenced. So don't go out and manage people. From today onwards, say, I am here to influence, not to manage. Okay, you know the famous scientist, Albert Einstein? He said, everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing it is stupid. So in a few years from now, you will lead all kinds of people. You will lead a business, you will have your own family, you will be responsible for many things. Rather than managing it all, try something different. Learn and make every effort to be an influencer. And that can be done. Now you would ask me, so what is the difference? You're just using a word, right? Very smart. Okay? You know what an influencer does? He understands people. He enthuses them. And he works with them. What does a manager do? He shouts orders. Okay? So first understand them. Enthuse them. See where they are coming from and try and work with them. Okay, great leaders do that and that is what people want. People want to be led and not managed. People want to be treated like people and not things. Okay, people are not dumb, they are not sheep. People want to be treated genuinely. So there have been hundreds of people who've worked with me in my teams, who've come and gone and whatever. Sometimes I forget their names. But uh, they always remember me at least for, at Christmas time and they get, get in touch with me because every year for Christmas I have a party in my house with my team. So they always remember the Christmas party and whatever. 
and you know no one has ever told me or expressed to me how i manage it <coughs> or how the business uh managed i mean what about what happened to the business or whatever but one thing they've always expressed to me and they've said they've expressed how the business and i had an influence over it whether it was negative or positive they're so open with me they even share the net the negative bits and then i feel bad okay i went wrong here and there over but they always talk about the influence we had i had or the company that they worked for had over them okay next do not be afraid to fail have we failed many times as a child did you run as soon as you were born no when new people join my team or organization this is the first thing i tell them okay i want people to make mistakes i want them to fail why because it is a sign that they are learning if you are if you ask ask them how's everything going good all well everything's fine if you get such kind of answers or you are giving such answers your learning has stopped you better start putting some fire under their feet okay you better start give them some more challenging things to do because they are not making mistakes and when somebody makes mistakes yes they do get a badging for it or they do get correction for it or whatever but i'm also glad because they're learning through their failures they're learning by making mistakes and they're learning new things because you don't make mistakes when you're doing the same thing you don't make mistakes when you're not taking risks or not take not going beyond your comfort zone okay and if you're not failing then you're not learning simple right if you're not eating you're not growing not horizontally vertically okay next the way up is the way down too yes or no no anybody going up and not coming down a plane that goes up has to come down correct take offs are optional but landings are mandatory So let me start by telling you one last story here. Again, real life story. The first month at my workplace, ITC C Rock, and I had this great friend. You all know him, Anil Chadda, who was from the second course, who was the lobby manager at that time, and I was in banking sales. And we had to do our lobby rounds, and I walked that morning down the lobby, and I was like, and I saw something happening there, some kind of a Actually, between him and someone else, but I didn't want to in interfere, and I walked away. And then in the evening, when I met him, I said, "What happened? There seemed to be some kind of a uh, odd odd traction there." So he said, "Yes, you know, me and this other lobby manager, we had a bit of an argument about a guest check-in or whatever, whatever, and the guy threw his pencil." on the desk and he walked off and he said i don't want to interact with you and i don't want to have anything to do with you i said so let him go i mean what the heck he says no i said what do you mean no he says i actually went up to him and said you may not want to talk to me and you may not want to work with me but i want to and i will continue doing so and i would want to work with you and i looked at him and he said are you mad what's wrong with you somebody is so arrogant and so you know is talking to you like this and you actually go and say this to him you know what he said to me sir you know remember one thing it's not the people above you as in your bosses and your directors or whatever that make you he said the people who make you are the people you work with and the people below you and i'll never forget these words and he was only a lobby manager at that time and today he is what he is and he's become what he's become he's the area director south right of icc hotels he has become what he is because of his brilliant people skills because he knows people down with him and above him. yeah so you must remember that you will meet many many people in your journey as you move upwards and onwards i'm saying upwards and onwards because not everybody goes up but you go on 
as you climb higher and yonder. But remember that you will also meet them on your way down. And sometimes life does take us down. It's a reality. There are times when we go down. It's not always up, 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 up. Building relationships and treating people with kindness and respect is one of the key elements in this industry, guys. Remember them along the way. These are the people who are your mates, who are sitting here with you, your colleagues, your bosses, your family, your friends, your customers, your suppliers, and many other people. And all these people will play a role in your life. All these people will have something to say about you. And you have to think what legacy you're leaving behind. Right? And I always remember these words my present boss says, says to me, don't burn bridges. Don't burn bridges. Because you never know when you have to walk back on that bridge. He's talking about relationships. Okay? So it's very pertinent in our personal lives and your, 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 your professional life. Very important. Because in our country, in our industry, and in our work, it's all about relationships. People give you business because of the relationship you have with them. People give you a job because of the relationship that they have with you. People want to help you because of the relationship that they want to. People want to mentor you, coach you, develop you because of the relationship you have with them. I'm called here every time to talk to you because I have a relationship with this college. Okay? Number 10, last one, so that I don't bore you anymore. Stay, fo stay focused, and I'll add one more thing. Please continue to be lifelong learners. Your graduation year is not the end of learning. Some of you may go in for higher education, some of you may not. But your learning should never stop, guys. Okay, there will be disappointments, there will be discouragements, there will be failures, there will be distractions. And these sometimes defocus us. And you know what is the biggest thing that defocuses us or derails us? Somebody else's success. Yes or no? He's got an Audi. I've got a Honda. Look, he and I both passed out together. He's earning one lakh a month. I'm earning 30,000 a month. And young people tend to do that. I'm not surprised. I've got young children as old as you. One is 19, one is 17. Somebody else's success always feels, you know, burning. We want to be better than others, compete with others, outdo the other person. And what do we end up doing? Lose our focus. I don't know whether you will outdo the other person, whether you will compete to be better than the other person, but I can tell you one thing. You will lose your focus. If you constantly concentrate on somebody else's success, use that same energy to focus yourself. No? Okay? And to stay focused, you have to be lifelong learners. Because if you're not learning, you're not growing. And you cannot focus. Learning does not stop the day you graduate, like I just said. Today at my age, I decided to do a postgraduate diploma in learning and, and development. Why? Because I love working with people. And when you do a course like this, you learn to understand people better. Why do you do such things, rather than getting angry and upset at them? Okay, this is something I always wanted to do, but I didn't get the time to do it because of the busyness, not finding the right institute to do it, and then the children came along, family, this, that, whatever. And it has taught me to unlearn and learn. There are many things in your life that you will learn to unlearn. Okay, so I used to drive, I learned driving, like all of you must have already learned driving. You know how we drive in India, no? like mad people. We drive like mad people. We don't look in the rear view mirror, side mirrors. Ashkar to dekhta if we drive an Audi. We don't want someone to bang us. And then I went to England, and obviously our Indian license doesn't work there. So I had to go for a test. And the first day I sat with this instructor and she told, she told me, I'm surprised you're not dead yet. <laughs> the way you're driving, you should have been dead long ago. She was a, she was a very outspoken, you know how the Brits are, right? They've got that very dry sense of humor. 
she says you don't even look at the mirrors <laughs> i said mirrors to nahi there there were no mirrors <laughs> when we used to drive the fiat so i had to unlearn a lot of things in order to learn the right thing okay so that's why we need to learn be lifelong learner because somewhere along the way we learn wrong things okay i used to never stop and look they had to stop turn my neck and look okay our laser sharp focus has to be on what we are good at that is where our focus should be don't focus on what someone else is good at don't focus on what vikas khanna is good at he is a great inspiration i may be today after my talk you all must be coming and saying ma'am nice inspiration talk but don't focus on me focus on yourself focus what you are good at your talents your strengths your capability your opportunities your dreams your passions and most of all your happiness that is the definition of success you know sometimes people think success means having a company with a turnover of 300 crores rubbish your success is your happiness if you are happy doing what you are doing and you are happy with a 1 lakh salary a month or a 20000 salary per month you are successful don't measure it by somebody else's success when you are when you have a company that that is 300 crores turnover there is somebody else who has a 500 crores turnover then what am i going to say i'm not saying don't have ambition please that's not what i'm saying i'm saying stay focused okay lastly as i wish each and every one of you abundant success for your future i want to end by sharing a quote by our very own satya nadella some of you may have heard it or read it but it is something i always hold close to my heart and i always remember this he says if you are not learning new things you stop doing great and useful things thank you very much We've got five minutes. If there are any questions, five minutes. Yes. Hi. Uh, so I currently have two standing offers. Uh, one is a MT program for Marriott, and another is from a startup company that I was working for in these past six months. If you were in my position, what factors would you consider before making a decision? First, let me say congratulations. Thank having you. having two offers in today's day and time is a brilliant achievement. Thank you. Uh, may I know what is the startup company called, or what business it is in? It's uh, actually a very young startup company. It's called Aflog Private Limited. Uh, they're coming up with a new app, which is a concept-changing thing about uh, bringing social media and shopping together. So that's the app, and I was working there for six months. And well, yeah. that's pretty much i can't give more details because yeah, even course. i'm yeah of course yeah okay if i were in your place of course firstly i won't tell you what to opt for that is your decision right but um, uh three things one is uh, think about what you are going to learn in both these places okay. okay what and how much you're going to learn in both these places okay okay don't think about what you're going to contribute they are not hiring you for con- for contribution okay they are hiring you for pulling your sleeves up and working okay so what are you going to learn how much are you going to learn and how much of that you're going to use in your future all right number 2 is look at the credibility of the brand or the people behind the brand so the app guy may not be a big brand mm. but look at his credibility who is he is he a big name he has to be a big name mm. or he has to have some good uh credibility behind him not in terms of money but who he is and good network of people no no who he is okay, okay. see his balance sheet if you can you want to get your salary for the next one year okay look at his ba- balance sheet his credibility in the market in his social standing uh what he is it shouldn't be some dream he had about standing starting this app company so he started it it has to, uh, when you start up a start up there's a lot of 3 4 years of work that goes into that so see that and number 3 what are your own dreams and plans will that be fulfilled by working in a company a and company b 
that these are the three things that you should think about and then make a decision. Good morning. So there's a lot of uh, difference, uh, like Visha industrial training and uh, the professionals in the industry. Uh, I find a difference in their attitude. So I wanted to ask you any one attribute which you feel uh, this generation lacks or maybe they're not focusing on that attribute, developing that attribute uh, which uh, previous generations did. Okay, so you found people having an attitude at that workplace? No, I found uh, having, uh, they were, uh, I would say, well, uh, I mean, in a, in a professional way, uh, groomed in a better way. Uh, there were many things like patience, and uh, uh, they, are, they always say that in interviews that uh, their generation had a certain kind of attributes. Which, are which your generation doesn't yes, have. Yes. Is that what they're saying? Exactly. Okay. So, uh, this is, I have, the average age in my team is uh, 24, 25, okay? I have to deal with attitude all the time. But you know what? I give attitude back. <laughs> okay? So um, don't worry about it. Even even that generation had attitude. Okay? I had attitude with Mr. Bajor. I said that to you. Okay? But um, let's be humble. I think humility is something that all generations can imbibe in us. Okay? We can, we can have everything else, but if you do not have humility, I think that kind of uh, negates everything else. So if there's one thing that you have to change about yourselves or learn or develop, try and imbibe humility in all that you do. Say, so, you, I you teach me. You are better than me. You know, I am willing to learn. I'm willing to understand. Okay? So if we have a little humility, that takes us a long way. Uh, when starting a career in the field of sales marketing, if we are given a choice to choose between the two departments, how should we make that choice? Like Which department? Sales and marketing. If you want to join in the field of sales and marketing and we are given a choice between sales, if you can either go in sales or marketing, how should we make that choice? What are the kind of factors that we have yeah. to look in to better you know, choose? For our sure. This is in, in hospitality. Yes. Okay. So, um, I started my career in sales, okay? Uh, I worked in sales for about 10 years, and then I um, started the marketing department. So the marketing department is the engine for the company or for the sales, for the revenue to come in, okay? In my career and in what I have observed and seen, very few people can do both sales and marketing because they are two different skills completely okay so sales is a guy who has very good uh, customer relations he's always he's an activist as in he's always doing the job always running around meeting targets uh, he has good convincing uh, negotiation skills good presentation skills good articulation skills and is a go getter all right that's what is required. Those are the attributes required to be a successful salesperson and a networker. A marketing person requires skills which are a lot of thinking, innovation. You have to be very methodical. You have to be very a strategist in the small making and then growing up to big, to becoming big. Uh, you are also good with people. Your communication articulation is good, but it is not to be a go-getter but it is to do a planning job, to set the ground for the sales guy to sell his product. So you do a lot of back-end job in marketing and then give it to the front-end guy and then. So can you see the two different set of skills? Okay, so you can't do both as a fresher. People confuse this completely, okay? You can do this once you reach the my level where you can do both, okay? But you can't do both at that level. So you have to choose between one or two. Now, you need to choose, you know yourself best. And maybe your mentor or your parents know you the best or one of your faculty. So you see what are these attributes that you have. And then excel, pick it up and excel it. If there's an afterthought, you can meet me later. Okay, thank you very much. I've enjoyed talking to all of you. Thank you, ma'am. Your words were inspiring while being raw, unconventional, and authentic.